Okay. Welcome everybody. This is our first town hall meeting of the new year. And I'm happy that you have joined us today. And we look forward to sharing some information with you. I'm Sandy Gabe. I am your state president this year and I welcome you to today's session. You're the reason that we're here today. Uh, whether you're a branch leader or a branch member or a state um, committee uh, participant, you are the reason that we're here. The California State Leadership Team is here to help. Our mission is to help you meet the mission of AAUW. The leadership team has broad responsibilities uh, to manage activities at the state level. And our discussion today is gonna to be focused specifically on the activities that are supportive of your work. So you can go online and see our strategic plan or success plan, and you'll see many more things than we're gonna talk about today. We are gonna to focus today on our priorities and how we can help you. So again, this is the mission. Our mission is to help you meet the mission. We don't have a separate mission that the state is focused on. So let's talk a little bit about the priorities for this coming year. Over the past couple of COVID years, we've done our best to keep the organization moving both locally and at the state level and maintain our membership and stay connected even though our activities have been primarily online. While Zoom increases our opportunity to connect and with a larger audience, for instance, today we have a pretty good uh, group of people here that we wouldn't be able to do if we were meeting in person likely. Um, it does, uh, we still have seen some declining membership across the organization. And so when I looked at where I wanted to help the organization go in these next couple of years, what I was really focused on and what I would like to focus on is linking together for our mission. So how do we work together to advance the mission? How do we join with you to help the organization grow? And there are four different areas that we want to help the organization grow. First, we want to reverse the trend of falling membership. So we have been losing somewhere around 7% of members year over year. And we want to stabilize that. And the, the uh, membership committee has the goal to change the pattern. We also recognize that branches are struggling with some leadership. And some branches are really struggling with having people step forward to become leaders. And so we are going to be focused on that as well. Our branch support team is actively working with those branches and with the board to address the issues so that we can maintain our membership, even if it's in a consolidated way where we have branches joining together and using one leadership model to manage multiple branches. And you're gonna hear from several of the groups today, a concept of peer group meetings. And those meetings are really uh, focused on bringing together members, leaders who have a similar interest. So all of the finance people, for instance, all of the DEI people, for instance, bringing together people with similar interests and jobs across the organization so that we can look at our successes, uh, look at our proven strategies and share those and problem solve. And we also want to infuse the organization with some pizzazz with the implementation of, of a new state project, which uh, Shauna is going to talk to you about today called GovTrack. There were many questions submitted during registration regarding the community hub, and we're not going to talk about the community hub today, um, but it, the work that we've done around that illustrates um, our response to the challenges that you face. So we've held two webinars, and I continue to be available to help branches problem solve with some of their issues in terms of membership, duplicate members, membership dues, and that sort of things. And I will continue to do that until those uh, issues are under control. So you can send it to me at state president at Sandy Gabe, or you can send it to web team at aauw-ca.org. And somehow it'll get to me and I will um, assist you with, um, with those problems. I can say that um, the number of questions that I'm getting is slowing down. So I think we're making some progress there, but I know that National is still struggling with their response time um, of being very, very long. 
I also want to acknowledge that not all members of the uh, leadership team are going to be active on our call today. For instance, our secretary, Tracy, she's on, but she's not going to have a speaking role. Diane is managing. Um, she's moved from uh, past. She's now past president and she's managing our governance committee. But we're really focused on the things that we want to help you with this year. So they're, they're in the background, but won't be speaking today. We're going to start out our adventure with uh, Tech Trek. And Mary has experience in both residential and virtual tech track. She's been a camp director for both of those types of environments. And she's taken over the role as tech track program director. And she's joined by Kathy Ford as a tech track financial liaison. And you'll see Kathy in yet another role later today because she's going to be talking with you about general finance. And Mary is well suited to move our Tech Trek program forward. She's a member of the Society of Women Engineers, or SWE, and she, li she actually lives in the space of inspiring young women. If you talk to her on any Monday, she will tell you about um, uh, meetings that she's been at, forums that she's been at, where she's interacting with young women and inspiring them to participate in technological areas and to consider those opportunities. And she's quite an inspiration to her students. If you have a chance to look at any of the feedback from the camps, the, the, her campers love her. So I'm gonna turn it over now to, to Mary and let her share with you her exciting plans for Tech Trek this coming year. Wow, Sandy, I, you know, that that was so glowing. I, I don't even know what to say. Um, I, I do wanna share, I think Kathy, um, you shared something that we had to look at or somebody shared a, a video for me to take a look at and it had to do with gray going gray during covid so as you obviously can see here i went gray during covid too um so next slide please thanks sandy so first be, before I, I even get started i just want to share we are not um moving away from residential we are still very committed to the residential camps and as a matter of fact this year out of the 700 plus campers that uh were selected they were scheduled to go to three quarters of them were scheduled to go to residential camps so um in the end we ended up with a an attrition of about 10 percent thank you covid normally our attrition rate is somewhere around three percent or so we ended up with almost 30% uh, of the campers were virtual, but that really didn't move much over the, the course of the summer. But it was an am amazing summer. We had over 200 um, volunteers, uh, counselors, coaches, and other people volunteering for the program, including many of you. In fact, most of them were probably um, some branch members that were helping out with either the school at the front end or helping out with the camps themselves. And so I think the thing that I want to emphasize is the most important part of Tech Trek is you. It's not the camps. The camps are great. We can do that um, and deliver the camps, but we can't do it without you helping us do that. And so we need to the, the, the real goal of the Tech Trek Committee, which is fairly new, it's, it's less than two years old now. Um, our goal is to uh, make sure that we are your voice, that we represent who you are. And that's why we have members from branches all over the state that are participating in the camp, plus the camp director, or in the committee, plus the camp directors. So I think the message is it, it, it represents the stakeholders, and that is you. And you are the primary stakeholders for that. Next slide. So what can you expect this year? She mentioned peer groups. We'll be the first one to raise our hand and say the branch coordinators have asked us for um, some support so that they can share how some of the branches do things better than others. Some of them do better fundraising. Some do better uh, volunteer raising, finding volunteers. Some do outstanding work with their schools and we want to understand how they do that and share those experiences among each other. So we are in the process of setting that up. This is going to be held. The first one will probably be held in the middle of November. 
Uh, we have a meeting tomorrow night with the committee to finalize a lot of these dates, and then we will share them with you. We are also going to work to set up a Tech Trek alumni group. And this is, many of you have them in your branches. So we figure right now, um, by the way, of the 120 branches we have, 94 of you participated this year actively in Tech Trek. So this is a substantial um, commitment with a large number of the branches. And of those, 18 of those 94 have Tech Trek alumni groups of some sort, some sort of formalized group. Well, that means we have a lot of campers that don't have the benefit of having that. So we're going to develop a shared community for them and develop the framework for that so that it works for everybody. And, that, and then, of course, we're going to continue to focus on operational excellence. We're going online. We are making sure that our, our systems are talking to each other. We're going to support you with the, the training that you need, not just for camp, but also for the front end to help you out with that. This year, we are going to also be piloting some accounting software. So we may be talking to some of you from a branch treasurer perspective about doing things a little bit different in those pilot camps. And I think this year, um, we do have some questions. We had a question asked about Stanford and we're working on that. I have a call tomorrow with some of the Stanford experts to get a history lesson and get brought up to speed on Stanford and what we need to do to get back there. Um, we're also looking at some other opportunities for new campuses so that uh, San Diego will be back up and running this year. We don't know in what capacity, how many campers, but suspect it's gonna be the, the same as we've always been able to do, which is about a hundred. And the virtual camp is still live. I think I've covered everything, Sandy. Okay, Mary, thank you very much. That's three minutes. That's wonderful. <laughs> okay, and now we're going to move on to Stormy. And Stormy is making a repeat appearance on the board. She served uh, briefly a few years ago, uh, uh, served out somebody else's term who had to leave the board. And then life intervened and she got married and moved and had a baby and she's back and she's decided to share her expertise in the diversity space with us. She's currently employed at the College of, Mar of Marin where this is her life's work. So I'm happy to introduce you to Stormy Miller. Thank you, Sandy, I appreciate that. And I just wanna share with everyone, I'm noticing that periodically my internet is unstable. So I hope that uh, I, it'll spare me three minutes so then I share the information with you all. So the DEI committee is, we're very excited to engage in another productive and action-oriented year. Uh, many of you know, know that our purpose is really to support branches to advance learning and expand commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, we emphasize increasing DEI awareness, engagement, branch participation in these efforts, with a lot of attention to connecting and collaborating with organizations that promote and embody DEI. The DEI committee has convened two times so far and um, for this year, and our overarching theme has really been speaking to empowerment. Uh, so, so how are we going to accomplish this, you might ask. Uh, next slide. Oh, we're over here. Okay. So we want to empower you as branch members, branch leaders through mentorship, support, and having a, just building community and having conversations around DEI. Uh, some spaces will be very specific. We've talked about peer groups, so it'll be specific to branch DEI officers and coordinators, uh, but others will be open to all members in an effort to build capacity around understanding issues of DEI, uh, to really create an inclusive space around understanding these issues and doing the work. Uh, we want to provide brave, safe spaces to discuss and explore this work without any judgment. This is life's work. There should be no goal towards mastery, only a commitment to cultural humility, learning, and activism to promote the changes we wish to see in this world. We really want to develop and share resources collectively that are going to expand your learning, our learning, and understanding in an effort to foster inclusive and equitable branch environments. And we want to hold you accountable. We're holding ourselves accountable. We want to hold you accountable to do this work. 
again, there, there's no DEI experts. We shouldn't be leaning on one person to do the work, whether you have an officer or coordinator or someone who's really said, you know, raised their hand and said, I want, I want to lead these efforts. Um, it really should be the entire branch committed uh, and uh, willing participants who want to promote equity, inclusion, and diverse spaces. And I believe that all of our, all of our members are really committed to this work. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so what can you expect from the DEI committee this year? Last year, foundational work was done and there was lots of outreach to IBCs and we wanna continue that momentum um, and, 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 and just support you all. And we wanna build community as much as we can. So we're working towards four DEI statewide chats. Um, these will have guest speakers um, facilitating more of a Q and A uh, and um, we'll have folks speak you know, within AUW and outside of AUW. Uh, we'll have quarterly conversations, uh, again, the peer groups with DEI officers, coordinators, and this is around, again, fostering mentorship, support, um, and building capacity with respect to this particular role, if you hold it within your branch or are thinking about it in the future. Uh, we want to make sure that we're sh sharing relevant resources and training uh, to facilitate these conversations around DEI. Really should be thinking about um, all respective spaces and, and community events that are occurring with you in, in your branch where you can have these conversations, whether they be brief or maybe the whole, the whole event is themed around issues of DEI, which is really central to our work. And one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one support. So if you're a DEI officer coordinator and you're really looking to discuss something more specific, then lean on the committee to support you in that work. We're here to help. And we want to continue that outreach to uh, branch presidents who may not have a DEI officer coordinator because really you're, you, you do hold a lot of responsibility in carrying out this work. So uh, participation in IBC meetings um, will continue to promote the ways in which this committee can support branches. So why DEI? And let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Thank you. Why DEI? Because we live in a society where we know oppression is real. We, a society where racism, colorism, sexism, ableism, and other acts of harm and violence based on identity is real. We know that diversity strengthens our work in AEW by bringing to life different identities, experiences, and perspectives and inclusivity foster, fosters brave and safe spaces. We look forward to doing this work with you. And I know some of you had the opportunity to participate in Nationals DEI officer training yesterday. Uh, I've been hearing good things. Uh, I also understand there it should have been recorded. And there's another opportunity on September 17th for you to participate in this first uh, session of DEI officer training. So uh, this is going to be a wonderful opportunity for us to stay in community with, uh, with one another. So thank you. Thank you, Stormy. I appreciate uh, appreciate your being back. All right, now we move on to the dynamic duo of Carol Holtzgraf and Sharon Siebert. And both Carol and Sharon have been uh, part of the organization um, in many different capacities. So Carol has been um, around the block quite a few times. And I can say with confidence that her passion is firmly rooted in Tech Trek, as well as the other things that she's doing. And I know that she enjoys her role in branch support. Last year, Sharon was part of the Mar marketing initiative. And this year, she's going to be joining Carol. And they are forming the branch support committee. And I know that they have already talked to many of you. So I'm gonna turn it over to them at this point in time. Actually, I don't know if, uh, if Carol is here or if uh, Sharon is gonna be doing this solo. I think I'm gonna be doing all of this myself, but okay. that's okay. Well, you can imagine that, uh, that uh, Carol is by your side since she's, her picture is right next to you. Correct. So uh, first of all, I wanna welcome you because the branch support committee is responsible for every single one of your branches. And that's about 118 branches throughout the state. So that's a pretty broad, broad purview. And the reason we have the Ask Us First logo on our 
um, first slide is because we are your first line of defense. So you should be able to uh, see and call us and send us email and talk to us about pretty much anything, which is what we're getting anyway, the questions that you have. If we don't know the answers, we'll find them and we promise to support uh, you and help you find them. If we can't, we will find the right people to connect you to. The reason that we are uh, a broad group is that we have absolutely the broadest committee in the state. We have members covering every IBC and every district that doesn't have IBCs. Our committee is huge. And with this committee, we are promising to provide you not just the answers to the questions you have, but leadership development and training, because that is a crucial aspect of what we do. The problem is that many branches are suffering from people who will not step up to leadership. And so we're hoping to be able to create a better pathway for the various branches. And obviously there are branches that need to be counseled in terms of different leadership structures or possibly merging and heaven forbid disbanding. So can I have the next slide please? So branch support is going to be offering all these different aspects. And one of the ways we're doing that is our committee is going to have um, oversight. They're going to be reading your web and your uh, newsletters. They're going to be looking at your websites. They're going to be um, covering anything that you put out to promote your branch. And they're going to be sharing those in, uh, pieces of information with us at our monthly com committee meetings. And therefore, we will be sharing the best ideas that we find out about throughout the state in our various emails to you and in our various ways that we're going to be communicating with you. We're going to be offering various forums um, during the year possibly on a quarterly basis, open to all members, just as this one is now, so that we can share best ideas and successes and possibly answer any questions that you might have. And we do need to update our California website. Right now it lists branch tools. We're going to be putting together the branch support information in an easily found format and that will include the leadership tools and leadership development support. So what we're going to be doing is um, collating all that information. You get lots of information from us in the California Connection and leaders get it in the board to board. We'll be hoping that you have potential leaders who are interested in being part of the training that we're going to offer before they might actually take the position. And once you have boards selected for the following fiscal year, we're also going to be offering training to them so that the rollout of the change in leadership and administration will be more seamless than perhaps it might have been otherwise. We obviously haven't mentioned the five-star program, but it's under our purview also. And one of the reasons we're all part of AAUW is supporting our own mission. We believe in our mission. And so that's why we exist. And the five-star program highlights various things that your branch can do to gain a star, to be part of the star groups and branches that have um, been exemplary on their uh, mission-based programming. You know, we're not just a social group. We have interest groups. We have fun things that we do. And that helps us bring in members that might be interested in just that particular interest group, but hopefully they joined also because of our mission of making lives better for women and girls. 
So we will be focusing on the five-star program and helping branches to figure out what will be the best way to achieve stars. We want to congratulate the 19 California branches that have already earned five, one to five stars in this past year. Next slide, please. So these are some of the webinars that have gone on and been recorded through the past several years that we have been doing this on Zoom. At the top of the AAUW California website, web page, you will see a ribbon. And if you move over to the right-hand side, you can just click on webinars and you can scroll down through the various webinars and partic particularly these four that we have pointed out have some benefit to you in terms of leadership development, membership recruitment, training and um, help with your leadership team working to the best way they can for the benefit of your whole branch. I'm sorry that Carol didn't have internet access today somehow, but um, she and I will be available to give you this help. We actually spent a couple of hours the other day with one of the branches on a Zoom event. So thank you all for understanding that I'm covering both sides of this coin and we will both be available to you to help you throughout the year. Thank you, Sharon. I appreciate you pinch hitting there and, uh, and just rolling with the punches here. And I know Carol would like to be here and I know she's probably trying to get in. Um, and it's unfortunate that we have some technical issues some days. So thank you very much. Okay, let's move on to public policy. And I have to just say, when I think of public policy, I think uh, Kathy Harper is public policy for AAUW California. Um, she uses both her, her legal background, uh, she was a prosecutor in Orange County for 23 years, and she's got a passion for women's rights to inspire a dedicated team of public policy wonks, I've always wanted to say that word, um, to create opportunities for you to spread the word to educate your members and branches and communities. And I appreciate um, the hard work that she does and her committee is uh, very large and has a very comprehensive plan for this year, which I think you're going to really appreciate when she uh, shares it with you. Are you ready? Thank you so much, Sandy. And yes, I do confess I am a public policy wonk. And on behalf of my committee and the board, I want to uh, welcome you all here today. And I'm so excited to share um, information about the things that we've got planned for you all for this year. So I want to start with a question. How many of you join, how many of you remember why you joined AUW in the first place? I'll bet it was because you didn't like the fact that women are paid less money for than men for doing equal work. Or maybe it was because girls are given fewer opportunities to excel in the STEM fields or in athletics. Or possibly because women still have to fight for the right to make their own reproductive choices. And you wanted to be part of the effort to do something about it. Well, get ready because this year the Public Policy Committee will be giving you lots of opportunities to be engaged and empowered to do just that. What do we do for, what does our committee do to help your branch? Well, in essence, our job is to put together a public policy program each year that is guided by our mission and our public policy priorities, and to provide assistance to branches in developing their own public policy programs. Each year we develop a legislative agenda by selecting and prioritizing bills we will support and advocate for throughout the year. We also develop and assist branches in campaigns to educate and rally the community to get out and vote. Can I have next slide, please? So what can you expect from us this year? We have four exciting projects this year to tell you about. Next slide. Let's start with our voter education campaign. Uh, this campaign will provide you all with the information and tools that you need to launch your own successful voter education and get out the vote campaigns in your own communities. We've already started with our social media campaign. You should have all have received um, 
the social media messages that we're asking you to make sure you get on your branch uh, social media platforms, your Facebook pages, um, Instagram, Twitter, whatever you use. And um, we will be doing those. We have nine of those planned between now and the uh, election day. And we'll be sending you one every Monday and asking you to get those out uh, by uh, the following, by the Wednesday of that week. We have done all the work. We put them all together. We got the messages there. All you have to do is post. We have a second uh, part of the campaign is we have developed, um, we've identified 16 congressional districts with candidates who either do not support our values or have incumbents who do support our values and maybe are in jeopardy. Our committee has vetted the candidates on their positions on eight critical issues that AUW supports. And we've developed uh, voter guides that compare the positions of the two candidates. And we'll be calling on branches within those districts to help us distribute these voter guides throughout their community. And finally, uh, we provide information on ballot measures. This year, AUW California is supporting two of the ballot measures. There's eight, six of them we don't, aren't really uh, that concerned about. But Propositions 1 and Proposition 28 uh, are the two that we've chosen to support. Proposition one uh, provides for a constitutional amendment to make sure that uh, women's right to choose to make their own reproductive choices is enshrined in our constitution. And we are an avid supporter of that. We're an active supporter of that proposition. We're gonna have uh, an article coming out in your October newsletters that give very detailed information on both of these propositions. So make sure you you look for that article. Next slide, please. Next, I wanna talk about the updating of the public policy priorities. Our public policy priorities are driven by membership input. That's all of you. And every two years, we put out a survey asking you to let us know what you think. Should we keep what we have? Do we need to eliminate some? Should we add others? It's time to update for 2023 through 2025. <coughs> excuse me, the survey will be coming out at the beginning of November, and we want to make sure we hear from you all. Next slide. So lobby day, let's talk about that for a minute. So we've been kind of experimenting. We had our first ever lobby day two years ago, and that was a single day event. Last year, we tried lobby week, which we thought would be a great way of uh, helping branches learn how to get out into their own communities with their own legislators in their offices and talk to them there. Um, COVID continued to get in our way and that didn't work out uh, exactly as we planned. This year, we're going to try again something new, kind of a hybrid. We're going to do a two-day event. Uh, it will be on March 21st and March 22nd. Um, this is a great opportunity for members to truly feel like they're making a difference by giving you the chance to talk directly with your representatives about our three top priority bills, which we'll be selecting in February. We do the training, you do the talking. So make sure you save these dates. We'll have the training webinar on the evening of March 20th of 2023, the day before our lobby, two lobby day events. Don't worry, you will be getting lots of information all throughout February and March to help you be, make sure that you're ready to get out there and talk. Okay, next slide, please. And finally, um, our Linking Together project. Um, that This is Sandy's vision for the year, as she stated, and uh, public policy wants to do our part by uh, helping to link together uh, all of our public policy chairs. So we're gonna be holding bi-monthly peer group forums for all the chairs. We had, we're gonna do this on the first Wednesday of every other month. Uh, I have here starting September 7th. We did in fact have our first one this past Wednesday. It was a great success. We all felt uh, almost all of our committee members were there and we had representatives, uh, public policy chairs from 33 different branches. So that was a very exciting kickoff event. Um, in these forums, we'll tell you what's going on at the state and national levels as, re as it relates to public policy issues. You tell us what's going on in your branches and let us know how we can help. 
so as I said, we had 33 at our first meeting. We want to double that and have 33 more at our next meeting on November 2nd. Uh, next slide, please. So I've given you here a list of public policy resources. I want to encourage everyone to please visit our webpage um, on the AUW California website. It has just tons of information. Uh, it has a, a list of our public policy priorities, uh, information on issues we care about, has our bill tracking instrument. This is um, when every February we meet. This, this year we're going to meet on February. We usually do it Mar in March to go through and select the bills that we're going to be supporting for the year. And we put those in this bill tracking instrument and it changes every Friday with updates of what's going on in the legislature. So everyone can, can uh, check there and see what's going on. And then we also have done a series of webinars. The only one I just want to point out is why public policy matters. This is a great webinar for first time public policy chairs. It's good for anybody for a refresher, but it's really helpful, I think, for first time chairs. And um, it gives you all kinds of great information about how we go about uh, putting together our legislative agenda for the year. So I think that's it. And thank you all very much again. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, sounds like your team and the rest of us are going to be very busy this year. Um, I'm going to answer a couple of questions that came up related to this. Um, the social media um, posts went out to all members and they came out much like the California Connection does in that same format. So that's where you can find those um, uh, article, uh, those uh, emails. All right. I'd like to introduce Janice Lee at this point in time. And Janice has been part of the leadership team for quite a while, and she's had a lot of different roles. She managed the nominations and elections committee. Uh, she's been our meetings planner when we could actually meet in person. So she was pretty busy with that. And most recently, she co-led the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. And this year, she's focused on our Branch Activity of the Year Awards. And she's going to be working with the communications team and helping to produce our webinars this year. Uh, before I turn it over to her, I just want to answer one more question. What is an IBC? We promised that we would try not to use a lot of AAUW speak, and it's very difficult to do that. IBC stands for Interbranch Council. Not everybody is part of an interbranch council, not every branch is, but they are geographically coordinated uh, branches that work together. There are also some districts that are not officially recognized as IBC, but they are geographic areas. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Janice. Thank you, Sandy. Greetings from the program committee. Unlike the previous committees that you've heard of that have been have formed large committees, we are a very small four person committee. So we're small, but we're fierce. And with that note, I'll take the next slide. So the question is, what do shoes for the homeless and a 50th anniversary have in common? I don't want you to crank your necks. Um, let me tell you the answer. Both activities were the recipients of the Branch Activity of the Year Award. Fremont Branch in, in 2021 won for their Step in the Right Direction uh, program, where the branch collaborated with local community entities to secure new shoes for homeless women versus the normal, which was getting used shoes or flip-flops provided for in the shelters. In 2022, Title IX at 50 by the Petaluma branch won the Branch Activity of the Year Award. Tied, entitled uh, Title IX at 50, you need it as much as ever. And this was a Zoom webinar that um, celebrated um, the progress uh, towards equity over the past 50 years and what needs to be done in the future to ensure the law remains effective. So why am I highlighting these at branch activities? Next paragraph, uh, next slide, please. It represents part of the two major responsibilities of the program committee this year. Very simply, we will serve to recognize and award 
Stellar Branch projects and programs in the Branch Activity of the Year Award. And secondly, we will serve as an in-house um, service group to the leadership committee in terms of coordinating and helping to execute um, the webinars that you will see in the uh, next year. Uh, next slide, please. So what can you expect from the program committee this year? We'll be awarding three, a minimum of three uh, uh, awards, recognizing innovative, unique uh, activities that meet our branch mission. No, I'm sorry, our state and a national mission. We hear so often about um, great ideas, whether it's through branch support or leadership meetings, we hear about great ideas that some of the branches are executing. And we never hear from you from Branch Activity of the Year Award. So we're encouraging you to uh, share them with us by applying uh, for the Branch Activity of the Year Award. Um, all uh, requirements and applications will be live on October 1st on our website. So look out for that. Um, it's a great opportunity to start bragging about your activities and accomplishments. Additionally, um, we want to make all the submitted contest entries available for other branches to use and execute. So um, that is uh, an excellent way of, of um, borrowing uh, great ideas. Third, we will coordinate the delivery of multiple informational and educational webinars um, on topics of value to branch members and leaders. In the future, there will be an evaluation survey after each of the webinars for you to provide input and to suggest new topics as well. So start bragging everyone and thanks for your attention. Thank you, Janice. I can't wait to see what awards we have this year. Last year, they were pretty interesting and I'm, I'm waiting to see what branches have been uh, focused on in this past year. So let me now introduce Shauna Rule. And Shauna is the executive director of the We Connect the Dots and Ed Equity um, nonprofit initiatives where she works to create tech access, transform education, and accelerate the acquisition of jobs for youth. And she's bringing those skills with her to work on GovTrek. And GovTrek was the winner of a state project grant a few years ago before COVID or right at the beginning of COVID. And uh, that was done by Kathy Harper in the COV branch. And we are going to resurrect that project because we thought we had a really good idea there. And Shauna is taking it under her wing and she is going to make a success out of it. So welcome, Shauna. Thank you, Sandy. And thank you, Kathy. Um, hi there. It is such an honor to be here with you today as the GovTrek chair and representing your amazing GovTrek committee. Um, you may be wondering what Gov GovTrek is. Sandy just gave an introduction to it, but um, our new program is, is the innovative virtual state project brought to you by AAUW California, designed to engage high school juniors and seniors across California with the goal of increasing the number of young women engaged in public service and elected office. Um, the agenda will include uh, things like career exploration, exposure to female legislators and role models, lectures, interactive activities like a campaign simulation, a speech competition, possible internships, and more. Um, GovTrek is an all virtual statewide program beginning in January 2023. Um, by participating, your branch can help change the game for women in leadership. Let me just repeat that. By participating, your branch can help change the game for women in leadership. We're really excited about this program and how our, how our committee can help your branch. Um, there's a few things we can do. Um, we, we believe this program can help you identify rising stars in your community. 
maybe the next senior female political official. Uh, we can help build your branch leadership pipeline by engaging with young ladies and, and the next generation with common interests and career goals. Um, and we can help strengthen connections with participating California branches and legislators across the state. What can you expect from our GovTrek committee? Well, the entire program will, will be designed, administered, and delivered in a live online classroom by the state AAUW organization. Um, this, so, but, but student participation will be managed through our local branches. So we're relying on our wonderful, wonderful branches to recruit local students from, from your high schools to register for this amazing program. So to, to summarize, um, keep your eye out for the October board to board newsletter and, and please check the AAUW California website where we will be sharing the webinar registration link to our GovTrek uh, launch event on November 16th. It's a, it's a kickoff event where we're, it's, where we're inviting um, branch members and branch leaders to, to come, uh, come learn about this amazing program. We'll have a message of inspiration from AAUW leadership, a program overview, and your GovTrek toolkit will all be ready for your branch to, to use. We've been very busy and we're, we're excited about the momentum we have and can't wait to meet with you. So please don't miss this webinar. Um, the GovTrek committee is ready to support you and to answer any questions you might have. Uh, you can reach out to us at GovTrek at aauw-california.org. And um, please, please come meet the committee members and learn about this amazing program at our launch webinar on November 16th. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shauna. Can't wait to see how this rolls out and how many girls we can help and uh, motivate to, uh, to continue their or to start their career. All right, now it's my pleasure to introduce Don Johnson. Uh, many of you probably, you, I don't know if you know what she looks like, but you have heard her voice uh, because she is the engaging editor behind the California Connection. Uh, she and I have been joined at the hip for several years um, in both state activities and at our local branch in Mariposa. Uh, we have done a lot of projects together and really enjoy uh, working together. I, but I still haven't figured out where her secret reserve of humor is, but I'm so happy that she can tap into it every month to bring you insight from the state that both informs you and makes you laugh out loud. So welcome, Dawn. Well, thank you so much, Sandy. So my anonymity has been revealed. I have been usually uh, pretty quiet about the fact that I uh, am the fundamental author of the California Connection. So I, I feel that I've been revealed. Um, let me get started. I'm having a little trouble seeing my screen here. Um, well, first of all, the Communications Committee should probably be called the Red Pen Committee because one of the primary things that we do to help your branch and the organization is uh, the responsibility for polishing all the written communications in order to put AAUW's best foot forward. That includes all of the emails, the website content, the toolkits, the presentations like this one, the social media posts, and all of the things that you see have generally been run through us and our red pen. Uh, and as you can see, we say no to a lot of capital letters and we say yes to the Oxford comma, so you can watch for that. So our main job is to make sure that all of the messaging that comes from this organization is clear and accurate and effective. And I think the benefit to all of you as members and branch leaders is that that makes you look professional. And that is our goal. The uh, next thing that we do to um, help support the branches and our members is we keep you all informed about all things AAUW. In other words, we're the ones who tell you what's going on. So our, all of these brilliant committee people that you're hearing from today, they come up with the ideas and they come up with the communications, but all of them run through us to be finessed and to make sure that you get them in the various ways that we communicate with you. Two of the publications we are, we are predominantly known for, the first one is the board to board, and we call that sometimes the B2B, 
And that is a generally a, a, a publication that comes out monthly and that's directed more toward the branch leaders. It's more administrative need to know stuff. The second publication that we've been doing is the California Connection and that is also monthly. And that is the one where we try to speak to you, the members, more directly, more informally, more casually, and sort of, you know, sort of share a little bit of a bond about being AAW members by pointing out things that we think that you might all be interested in that are not as administratively focused in the hopes that you'll read it and you'll know what's going on in AAW. Next slide, please. So we also are responsible for keeping AAUW in the public's eye. And that is really just a way of saying marketing. So one of the things you'll see that we do is we have very robust social media posting going on. And we ask you when you see these posts, share, share, share them, because that means that other people are seeing them and that's how we market ourselves. We know that you are constantly asked, uh, AAUW, uh, what is that? Is that like, a, A, like what is that? So our job is to make sure that we are putting our face in the front of the public. So we do that through a lot of social media posting. We also do that through our website. Our website has to serve two audiences. One is you, the members and the branch leaders, but the other is the public. So that if they land on our website, they see something that looks engaging and interesting and they understand and learn about the work that we do and maybe want to become a part of it. Our last main task for us as the communications committee is that we need to help other committees help branches. They have great ideas as you are hearing and uh, our job is to give them the best tools to bring their plans to life. And that might be a website post, it might be an email, it might even be something called an Instagram story, uh, but we try to help them bring those plans to you. Uh, we certainly are the ones responsible for building and presenting webinars like this. We've done uh, scores of them, and they are all recorded and placed on our website. So, you know, if you miss the moment to see us live and in person, you can go look at our recordings. Uh, we also have, um, you know, a lot of tech support available, and that is primarily through your president, Sandy Gabe, who heads up our technical services division. And uh, as you can see by her work with the community hub, she can help you wrestle with software. Next, please. So what can you expect from the Red Pen Committee this year? Continued vigilance for excellence in communication. So uh, continually looking for the Oxford comma and no run on sentences. We will, like the other committees, be kicking off a peer group. This will be a technology-based peer group. So this will be for anybody in your branch who handles tech. And this will be a chance for them to get together and learn and share and problem solve. Now that may mean that it's your newsletter editor. It may mean that it's your webmaster. More likely, it means your eight-year-old granddaughter. In any case, we're going to be sending an email to the presidents in the next day or two with information about sending a representative to the kickoff meeting for our peer group on September 26. And the first webinar that we'll be producing to, um, out of that peer group is for tech support for all of you is the one uh, instant noodles. Nope, it's Instagram. How could you not want to go to that webinar? So that's for everybody, members who want to learn about but uh, Instagram as well as branches who want to use it more effectively for promotion. The next thing that we'll be doing is we're gonna be looking at our website content a little more carefully this year. And we wanna make sure that it's appealing to potential members, um, that it's up to date, it's easy to navigate. So we'll be looking at that. Uh, next, we'll be making some changes to that board to board uh, publication that I mentioned that goes to board leaders. One of them we've already implemented, which is that we suggest uh, for each article that the committee su uh, submits about what they're doing, we suggest to your newsletter editors whether or not it would be something that would be of interest to all the members and that they could include in their newsletter. The other thing that we're doing this year for B2B, and I can use that initial now because I've defined it, is we are adding a quick tips section, which is where we're asking the committees to send or to share with you a really just quick and easy thing that you could do in your branches as either a member or a branch leader. For example, have you thought of asking your tech trick parents to join? How easy is that? One email. Um, the next thing that we're doing is um, in the California Connection with Slight Changes here, we introduced a new section called Leading into Leadership 
So we are asking if you're a leader in your branch, why did you do it? That's what we want to know. And we're getting some inspiring stories from, the, from you guys about how, why you be, became leaders and why it's rewarding. And we're publishing those, we'll be publishing those monthly uh, just to remind people of the rewards of leadership because I think odds are most of you will need to find a new president next year. So let's start making people understand that it is rewarding to do that. And the last thing you can expect from us is continued robust social media activities. Certainly you've heard from Kathy about the extensive voter education program that is on the social media now. Certainly we webinar, we promote our webinars and that's not just to you then, but to the public as well. Of once again, marketing uh, us and what we do. Um, we're celebrating the branch anniversaries on social media this year and including a link if your branch is mentioned so people can find you and join. And then we're also, have a little feature called Meet the Leaders, which kind of highlights and personalizes those of us who serve on the state level, again, to make other people notice that we are like a super fun group and they wanna be a part of us. Next slide, please. Our useful webinars from the communication committee that you might wanna look at are listed here. Certainly if you're a newsletter editor, you'll want to look at the mail chimp demo, which really walks you through, through how to use that a robust platform for um, for improving your newsletters and its um, and their distribution. Um, Beyond the newsletter is a review of all sorts of publicity tools that you might consider using. Again, not just to your own members as well as to the public. Um, some of these are these are tried and true. Some of them are old, like press releases, but some of them are brave and new, like using robocalls or QR codes. The next couple are part of the social media training um, series that we're doing, the, the last one being the one on Instagram that's scheduled for next month. So you might wanna check out those two. Uh, again, do sign up for the uh, October 4th Instant Noodles. No, nope, it's Instagram. Next and last slide, please. So pre-Zoom, we uh, pre-Zoom, as in not presume, but pre-Zoom, we uh, had a lot of wonderful uh, presentations that would be uh, a great training for those of you who are involved with communications at your branch. So I urge you to go to the website and look, uh, these are all re represented there as PDFs. There's so much information on each slide that you almost don't need a voice walking you through them. So do look carefully at those. The last two in particular may introduce you to a lot of tools that would make your life easier that you don't even know about. And it's very important to be easy in our lives. So uh, I think that wraps it up for the Red Pen Communications Committee. I'm sorry for all the words, but we are a communications committee and that means that we have big mouths. Thank you, Dawn. Uh, you did a great job and I uh, appreciate all of the words that are on your slides and all of the effort that the committee puts into making, uh, making us sound professional and, uh, and engaging. So thank you. Okay, we're going to turn over to money now. It's time to talk about the bucks. And Raleigh, unfortunately, is not able to be with us today, but we have Kathy Ford. And Kathy Ford is on the Finance Committee, and she leads the Investment Subcommittee, and she's leading our Tech Trek Finances this year. So um, you're in good hands. And she has a very um, unique way of making very complicated financial information digestible. And she has really uh, taken the, our investment policies under her wing and helped the board understand and to work with us to actually change investment uh, perspectives um, uh, so that we are in a better place. So I wanna welcome her and uh, turn, I'll turn this over to you, Kathy. Okay, thank you, Sandy. Yes, good. That's the slide I wanted. Um, you know, it's great to see so many people joining this webinar. I think we got up to probably around 165 plus people joining all the panel members. Um, so what does finance and investment do to help your branch? If you see this top level administers all critical financial matters essential to the operation of the California, with budgets and monitoring and reviewing the investment policies and making appropriate recommendations to the board. That 
is top level responsibility for the that the finance committee has and it really is good governance just practices that are necessary to keep uh, the AEUW California finances stable and which supports the branches as well. But because good governance and financial management is mandatory for branches as well to stay healthy, the Finance Committee has really focused on providing specifics for the branch treasurers to help them do that. Next slide. Thank you. So what can you expect from the Finance Committee this year? Um, the committee just finished uh, updating the financial section on the California website, and the goal was to provide, really make it easier to find topics, to answer questions that a treasurer would have or a president of a branch, and to make sure that all the information was current and consistent and that the links worked. So that has just been completed. And so the next one is the plan to have two Q&A sessions on branch finance in the spring and fall for branch finance officers and any other member in the branch who is interested in that. Uh, if you get on the website, the new and improved website, and you can review all the information there, and after doing that, you still may have a question that is not covered in those because they tend to focus on the more standard operations, processes, filings that uh, are necessary. So if you have a specific question about something that's a little different, you will have an opportunity to ask about it in these Q&A sessions. Or if you're wondering exactly how do you apply something that's been presented on the website. But I encourage you to go on the website and go through that and giving us feedback as to whether that's more helpful to you is also good. The other thing is the Finance Committee began reviewing um, camp financials this past year. And so now it is going to have a pilot of uh, using a standard accounting package to make it easier to view into the um, transactions at the camp level, uh, have better financial management, but also to make it easier for the camp treasurers. Just as our goal was to give a lot of support to branch treasurers, we want to do the same thing for camp treasurers. And then the continued oversight by the investment subcommittee of our AUW investments. And it is, definitely is a volatile market. We want to make uh, sure that the financial um, goals and the policies are followed by our moderate growth and in income goals for our investments, make sure our allocations and choices are consistent with the policies, even in a market like the one we're experiencing now. Okay, next slide. So these are the webinars that are currently posted. The first one is covers a fairly broad um, group of topics, but it introduces you to what those topics that you would be covering if you were a treasurer, also if you're a president or other one on the board at your branch, and you want to make sure that good governance practices are um, being applied. The next one, the 2021, how to be a branch treasurer was more specific to the treasurer's functions, the reports they would do, the deadlines they face, the processes they would go through to create reports, to create a budget, to manage membership dues, uh, which is a big topic now with the new hub. And then the third one, let's talk taxes, really got into the nitty gritty of filing those standard forms like the 990, the 199, um, that are required every year and literally how you would take those financial reports that you learn how to create in uh, how to be a branch treasurer and put them on those tax filings where they're required when you would need them and how you would apply your financial statements to a tax filing. So check out these seminars along with the rest of the resources on the state website under branch tools finance and bring your questions to the Q&A 
sessions that we're having in the fall and the spring. Thank you, Kathy. I just have to make a shout out to the finance team because they worked their proverbial uh, butts off over the past several months to revamp the finance section of the website and organize it in a way that will be helpful to branch treasurers to find information. I think you guys did a fantastic job. And we got to have fun because they gave us a challenge about organizing information. So we got to use a couple of new tools and we were very excited about that on the communications team. So thank you. Okay. Now I'm going to turn it over to Marlene Kane. And Marlene uh, returns this year to lead our speech track program. And I have to say her professional business experience gives her great insight into how to engage an audience and how to capture their attention. And her committee always comes up with some amazing topics that are timely and allow us as AAUW members to hear what the next generation is thinking about and their topics that can engage our high school students. So I'm going to introduce now uh, Marlene, take it away. Thank you, Sandy, very much. Uh, yes, engaging an audience is a wonderful public speaking skill, along with understanding that what you say is as important as how you say it. But you know, something happens to some folks when they are asked to stand up and speak. Maybe actor George Jessel was right when he said that the human brain starts working the moment you're born and never stops until you stand up to speak in public. Well, Speech Trek aims to change that. Uh, to date, we have awarded over $50,000 in prize monies at the state level. And for the past 16 years, we have helped branches like yours introduce AAUW to the next generation uh, by inspiring students to step a bit outside their comfort zone, find their voice, and really share their thoughts on a provocative, as Sandy said, provocative uh, and mission-based topic. By the way, this year's question, just to recap, is how can communities, organizations, and citizens of all ages help protect and expand voting rights? Let's take a quick look at how we help your branch. Uh, we do oversee the competition that starts at your level, and we provide toolkits for both the branch and the student, both of which serve as roadmaps for a successful contest. And we are available for questions throughout the year. Uh, as it says here, no question is too small. But as you look at this list, uh, also want to let you know that the committee is mindful of branch budgets. And we have kept the cost of this program uh, quite, quite low and want to remind you that though it's low cost, it's high impact. The uh, entry fee for Speech Trek per branch is $25. You heard right, $25. Any other expenses is at the branch's discretion. So I think the best uh, benefit really is that when you do host a speech track contest, uh, you are introducing uh, to AAUW to the next generation, and this helps you foster future membership, and it helps, helps your brand strengthen connections, uh, not just around the block, but with virtual outreach these days, really around the nation and throughout the world. Here's what you can expect this year. Next slide, please. So the toolkits I mentioned are already updated for the 2022-2023 year and is available on the website, both the branch toolkit, which contains everything you need, including the memorandum of understanding uh, and the notification of your first place winner, and the student toolkit, which helps the student understand how the judging is performed and it gives them also provides them the mandatory two forms for them that we, your branch will need uh, before they can compete. Uh, we have a dedicated hotline. Make a note of this number. Use it anytime you have a question. No big or too, not big enough or not too small. It is never too small for that. Um, as you have heard from other committees, we think that uh, a speech trick peer group not only is advisable, but is really in response to many of you who have asked for it. And it's a place where you'll be able to talk to other branches, share best practices and so forth. I also want to remind you that there was a rule change this past year and that AAUW members may now serve as judges. So we think that's very helpful for their branch, especially for those branches who may have had some, some trouble recruiting judges in the past. Uh, another way uh, we hope this helps you this year is that we have extended our deadline 
for the MOUs, the memorandum of understanding that we do need in order for our branch to participate. Uh, that deadline has been extended to Friday, November 18th, and we look forward to seeing many of those MOUs. Uh, of course, you can send it in now if you want, but the deadline would be November 18th. Next slide, please. So a couple of webinars uh, that might be helpful for you if you are particularly if you are new as a speech track chair or are not familiar with speech track, the first one is sort of a speech track 101 for you. If you are planning on hosting a virtual speech track this year, uh, rather than in person, then the second one will be of, of its particular help, helpful for you too. I think equally useful this year will be the peer group like we mentioned, and you can exchange, of course, information and talk to branches like Poway Penasquitos. Poway Penasquitos has uh, had two state winners in the past three years. And when we asked them, well, how, how have you done this? What is your secret? One of the things they said was that uh, they really appreciated the support from the state speech track team. So we look forward to supporting all of you at your branches this year and want to wish you a successful speech track contest. And uh, want to remind you the next time you stand up to uh, speak in public, we hope your brain continues to work and inspire us all. Sandy? Thank you, Thank you Marlene. Okay, let's move on to AAUW Fund. And Karen Vanderworken has jumped in with both feet. She was the executive director for financial training for 24 years, and she's been a college writing instructor for seven years. And in addition to being on the AAUW California board, she's also an IBC or inter-branch council chair. So welcome, Karen. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, first of all, what is AAUW Fund, you ask? It's the place where you can make your donations to fund women's graduate studies. We've been talking this morning or hearing this morning about all sorts of uh, projects like we have Tech Trek, Speech Trek, Gov Trek, and local college scholarships. Coming this fall, we are going to be focusing on the women's graduate studies. This is where you can show us the money. We have four uh, upcoming fund events that will showcase these graduate fellows. There will be eight to 12 of them at each event, each giving about a five minute project overview. Since 1888, AAUW has been investing in women who go on to change the world. They become professors, administrators, deans, and college presidents. The first American fellow recipient, Ida Street, received $350 to study early American Indian history. You think that may not be very much, but it was in 1888 dollars. So it was a pretty significant amount. Uh, now funding has expanded internationally and there are fellows in over 150 nations. Next slide. AAUW fund measures or ensures the strength, relevance and viability into the future. Fund opportunities include supporting STEM, Title IX, pathways to jobs, supporting pay equity, retirement security, career and workplace training. Next slide. Here's some interesting fun facts, fun fund facts. Uh, Madame Marie Curie was a STEM pioneer for her radium research. World War II War Relief Fund helped women get jobs. African Educators Program to Advance Civil Rights. Dr. Joyce Brothers received AAUW funding. And there was a fund created to honor Coretta Scott King. Next. How does the AAUW fund help your branch? We help support you in your branch fundraising. We help you 
uh, pre, uh, provide fund events and programs to educate the members about AUW Fund. Uh, we certainly encourage you giving to the AAUW Fund. That's how we fund the fund. Uh, we schedule fellowship and uh, grant recipients to speak at branch meetings in the fund events. Next. What can you expect? Well, inspiration. There are four fund events that will feature uh, the speakers describing their work in a dazzling array of topics, highlighting their studies. You can register online now. Uh, you can register one, two, three, or all four of these events. And then later you can schedule uh, one of these uh, speakers to attend your branch or interbranch council events. We certainly encourage your donations. Our goal this year is $525,000. We're pretty close at $405,000. And the slide to the right here uh, shows you how to uh, donate now. Just say that it's in honor of an AAUW California Fund event. Next. No, I'm not going to read all these off, but these are some of the many topics uh, that these students or uh, student fellows are going to present. There's sustainable environments, global uh, migration, geriatric well-being, and there's at least four in this group that are really STEM-related, uh, future innovators in robotics, uh, let's see, uh, dis uh, blah, blah, blah. where is it? Uh, empower her, increasing STEM awareness. You'll uh, things in other parts of the world. So uh, please join us and donate. Show us the money. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Okay, so we are running a little bit uh, long on time, and in uh, in honor of that, I want to make sure that we have enough time to go through our membership um, presentation. Uh, Sharman is not able to be with us today, and she did record um, a brief message, which includes uh, letting you know that she is managing the nomination process for upcoming board positions. So we will have an opportunity to have more information about that in upcoming um, publications. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip right over to membership. And let's see if we can get there. Okay, so membership. So Marcia Swales, uh, retired from a career as a teacher, a legislator, and a nonprofit board president in Minnesota. And their loss is our gain. We're happy she's here. In addition to her passion to grow membership in our organizations, like many other leaders, she has a, a passion for Tech Truck and has started uh, really focusing on Tech Tech Truck is what brought her to AAUW California. So I'm going to turn this over and, and Marsha is going to wrap up our session and then we'll do a couple of Q&As at the end. Take it away, Marsha. Hi, everybody. It's really good to be here. And I am so delighted to chair the membership committee there. It's a group of very passionate women. All of them are so dedicated to wanting to grow AAU, AAUW California. So since I took over this job two months ago, I've done a deep dive into data. I've been looking at all kinds of graphs, reading reports from marketers and consultants. And no matter how fancy the consultant language is, it all kind of boils down to these three things. We're old, we're burned out, and we don't think anybody knows who we are. <laughs> so we want to change that with a new mindset. Next slide. Next slide, thanks. So our preferred mindset, what does that mean? Well, if we are going to be an exciting and engaging organization that is able to reach out to women across the state, we need to present ourselves as vibrant and smart action people. And every single one of us in the branch in the state 
is an ambassador. We all are responsible for growing this organization. Next slide. So how is the membership committee going to help your branch this year? Well, of course, it is recruitment and ret ret retention strategies, and we will continue the college and university partner memberships that have been going on. But we do have a focus, and this year in particular, we would like to focus on two demographics. The first is newly retired women. These women bring a wealth of experience from careers or volunteer work and just life, and uh, they are ready to move into something new that is providing meaning and like-minded community. That's how I got into uh, AAUW as, as a retired teacher. I moved here and I immediately began uh, my, my life in California as a part of a very vital group. The other one that I would like to uh, talk to you about is younger women. We cannot ignore this demographic. Young women in post-college and early career are, they're drawn to advocacy, yes, but the talents that they bring have to do with their understanding of technology, social media. Um, these kinds of things can be really important as we try to reach out into our communities. Next slide. <clears throat> I hope you like the little old lady from Pasadena, those of you from Pasadena, hi, but I just, I love, oops, I love this uh, picture because it contains the kind of energy that I hope that we can drive out of this uh, town hall with today. So what can you expect from the membership committee this year? Well, the very first thing I want you to know is that for the last six weeks, our committee has been working on what we call the membership growth plan and resource packet. We would like to have a launch of this with all uh, membership VPs and any leader, branch leadership team members or any members that are just general, uh, general members who have an interest in growing their branches. Um, the, the resource plan is going to have ideas that can support small branches, medium-sized branches, and large branches. And we're kind of excited about that. We were asked to pick a number because as Sandy mentioned at the beginning of the town hall, we are losing about 7% a year. So we decided to go a little conservative. And for this coming year, we are going to uh, ask that everybody focus on 6%. Now, what does 6% mean? If we are an organization across the state with several thousand members, when you do the math, it's about 650 new members that we need to, to pull into our organization. But I'd like to kind of break that down a little bit more. Say that you are a member of a branch of 60 members, which is kind of on the lower end of the middle range of branches. If you are in a branch of 60 members and we asked you to raise your membership by 6%, that would mean that you would need to have 3.4 new members join your branch. Now let's round that up, of course. So you have four new members join your branch. Think about that, 60 members, and we need four to hit our goal of 6%. If we do that across the state, we probably will hit that number that I'm looking for, 650. Um, there are lots of ideas that are going to be in this packet, but another goal, another idea that we have is to create community discussion groups. And Kathy Harper did a great job of talking about a lot of the topics that are out there that could be used at Lobby Day. But there are all kinds of action community discussion opportunities. Say your branch has a nice relationship with the library and you want to use a room there. If you advertise this discussion group, maybe it's about drought mitigation, or maybe it's about forest fire mitigation, or if you're willing to engage in a little more controversial one about Dobbs or any of the other kinds of issues that might be impacting your community, then we would like for you to invite community members, have a speaker, have a Q&A, and then at the very end, do the ask. 
I, we're pretty bad about doing the ask. So we need to say, we are AAUW. We would love for you to uh, consider joining us. Have a sign-up sheet, have flyers, have all the information. And then the most important thing is follow up. Give this person a call, offer to meet them for coffee, do the ask, make sure that they are engaged and ready to join. And then we might be able to grow from that. We also are hoping that we can create a culture of recognition, uh, starting out particularly with recognizing branches that do hit their goals or grow by double digits. Um, we would like to recognize members who bring in like a, a five, they recruit five people to join their branch. So we're working on the criteria, we're working on the kind of uh, awards that we would like to give, but we do think creating this culture of recognition is going to be important. Um, and then we're, we're wanting to increase our brand awareness. Uh, we want to engage an advertising partner. I've been charged by the leadership team to be looking for that. We need to put out some RFPs, we need to do some interviews, and then we're going to develop an ad campaign. What that will mean for you is that we will have some templates uh, for like local newspapers and uh, periodicals, you know, community magazines, um, things like that, that you can like announce things, tech trek, uh, uh, scholarship winners, things like that. Uh, and we're, we're pretty excited about this. I think when you see the resource pack, you're gonna be kind of blown away by a lot of the ideas that we have. Um, next slide, last slide, I believe. I'm not gonna go through each of these, but I am gonna encourage all of you to watch the first webinar listed here. It's called Finding New Members from Gen Z to Boomers. And this was, um, created, I believe in 2021 by Sandy Gabe, but boy, does this address the two demographics that we are really wanting to focus on and it, it has lots of concrete ideas in it. So that is an hour and a half well spent. I think you will feel a lot more comfortable about reaching out to these two demographics. So I am so excited about this coming year. Um, if you have any questions, you can certainly email me at the membership email address for the state. Um, our committee is spread out across the state. If you would like for any of us to either uh, speak to your IBCs or if you, interbranch council, sorry, or uh, to come if we're close and we could come to a branch meeting or a multi-branch meeting, we would love to do that. So thank you so much for your attention. And I look forward to our launch in November. We, we are going to, we're going to really do some good work this year. Thank you, Marcia. I'm looking forward to it too. And I can't wait to see the toolkit. That's going to be great. <laughs> So we're really out of time um, today. I will um, uh, make a couple of final comments for uh, some of the topics that were answered in the chat, but um, might still be open. Um, so the, the email that came from public policy, if you're looking for it in your inbox, if you search for the email subject, help AAUW California educate voters, and then it's it's easy, but that first section will get you uh, to find the email. Um, it came from AAUW California, but I don't remember who this, the specific sender is. So you can look for that there. Uh, Stormy wanted me to make sure to tell you that the DEI chats will be open for everyone and they'll be publicized and they don't start until October. So I think we're okay um, to get that word out. Um, there was a question about the, uh, quarterly reports from AAUW Fund. Um, uh, Tremaine has offered um, if you send to him, um, and I guess we can send that information out um, that he will run re individual reports. They're still struggling with getting those fund reports out for everybody. I know Karen was working on some to try to get out for, for people that had asked for them. And finally, um, and those and those uh, fund events are all on Zoom. 
So they'll, they'll be on Zoom. And then somebody had asked a question about GovTrek. It is a new program. However, it was um, the recipient of some funding um, at COV and Kathy Harper did the initial development on a program that they did at their branch. So uh, we're taking that um, as a launching point and it will be a virtual program that is offered across the state um, for this coming year, starting in January. So I think um, I think that covers everything. I want to thank everybody for being here and uh, for staying through um, all of this amazing information. And we look forward to seeing you again in the future. Bye.